You come home from work and you do everything you got to do and then you flop down on the on the couch and watch Downtown Abbey or something like that. You're not living in integrity of who you are. You're not doing the thing that your best and highest self would do. And you go to bed and you might not consciously feel it, but it's eating away at your soul. This is the How to Quit Working Show. Jeff Steinman believes entrepreneurship is the only true path to freedom. That's why he created the How to Quit Working Show, where you'll hear stories, insights, and inspiration from lifestyle fanatics who left their soul-sucking 9-to-5 job forever. Now, here's your host, author, entrepreneur, and ultimate lifestyle fanatic, Jeff Steinman. Hello and welcome to the How to Quit Working show. I am excited to be with you today and talk about another really cool topic. And today that topic is going to be how do you figure out what to do? There's all these situations that you encounter in life, whether it's what the next step is in your business, what to do about a relationship, what to do uh, about your job, or maybe just what to eat for lunch or what to do tonight after you eat. There's all these decisions that we make and I wanna talk about a simple way for you to figure out what to do in that situation and not only what to do, but what to do that will take you to the highest place that you possibly wanna go in life. I am excited to talk about this topic because it's one that has been great, hugely transformational for me and that I have actually done a lot of work to uncover how to really make this work. So I look forward to sharing that with you. And I'm gonna do that in just a second, but first we're gonna talk about the How to Quit Working Circle because that's what we do all the time on the show. We talk about the How to Quit Working Circle because it's a place where people like you can go to get support, encouragement, free training, and just have a group of people around through our, our, uh, our, our private Facebook group that lets you share your experiences and share the things that you're struggling with and the things that you're having success with with people who are just like you, who have the same values that you do, who some of whom have achieved more than you, some of whom have achieved not as much as you. And that's it's such a great place to go, and there's so many benefits to being in the circle. I won't even tell you any more about it. Just go over to howtoquitworking.com slash circle and jump in there. I look forward to seeing you over there. But before you do that, let's talk about this topic of what would your best self do? And, and that's, I, I, I sort of framed it up about talking about, like talking about decision making. But really what this is about is it's about stepping back and saying, if I were my best and highest self, if I were the ultimate person that I want to be, and for so many folks that I talk to and folks who watch the show and for myself, that's so much about integrity. There's so much about, there's just things that I want to do in this world and there's a way that I want to be, there's a way that I want to be perceived, there's a way that I want to feel as I go about my life. And you have to begin by knowing that, right? You have to know what does it look like and feel like to be your best and highest self. And that could include wealth, it could include a family of some sort, it could include relationships, it could include uh, a business, it could include not-for-profit work, it could include doing lots of work on your hobbies, whatever it is, you've got to get really clear on that. Because what we're going to be talking about today is making the decisions in life, and again, when I say decisions in life, I'm talking about whether it's the next step in your business, the next step in your career, relationships, or what to eat for dinner tonight. All of these decisions, we want to drive them from that place of your best self. And you can't make decisions from that place without first knowing what that place is. So you have to get really clear on that. And I know from the things that I hear from folks who, who listen to the show that many of you are very clear on that. You really know what it is that you want. You know the contributions that you wanna to make to the world. You know the people that you wanna help. You know the car you wanna drive. You know the wealth that you wanna have. You know what your family, what you want your family to look like. But it's really important when you're making a decision like to, to have that in your mind as the frame of reference. And really what you're then doing is asking yourself, what would this person do? This person who 
has all the things that I want and is in the life situation that I want to be. So step number one, I like to put these into simple steps. Step number one is write down who this person is that you really want to be. This is not just another visualization exercise, but this is about getting clear on that and having that as a perspective and a, uh, it's almost like a lens to look through as you make these smaller decisions in life. So just write a couple of paragraphs, maybe two or three paragraphs. It doesn't have to be really long. You don't have to go into a lot of detail, but you just have to have that general idea of what would it look like? Where would you live? What would you do every day? What, uh, how much money would you have? What would be the ways that you spend your time? What does your family situation look like? And so on. And you get really clear on that, write a couple of paragraphs about that and have that as a sort of frame of reference or a lens through which to look at all of your decisions that you make. Now, how to actually do that <clears throat> is what we're going to get into next. So step number two is anytime you are faced with a decision, anytime that you're faced with a decision in life that you have to make, and again, I can't emphasize enough. I use this process for like, okay, it's three o'clock and I have six things I need to do. Which of the six should I do? Or it's nine o'clock at night. Should I go to bed? Should I do some more work? Should I go out and have a beer? I use this for all of those little things as well as larger decisions uh, in, in my life. For example, there was uh, the How to Quit Working Daily Show that I started back in the, I think it was the spring and ran that through the summer and early fall and I made the decision to discontinue it uh, after a while. And that was a difficult decision to make but that was the type of, an example of the type of decision that I use this process to make. So this decision process can be used for any type of decision that you're making, no matter how big or how small. But again, once you've written out that whole thing about that person that you want to be, then when you're faced with a decision, you have to ask yourself, what would that person do? What would that person who has that success, who has that lifestyle, who has that family, who has that money, who is in that exact situation that you want to be. And when I say that person, I mean, you're talking about your future self. What would you do when you're in that situation? What is the decision that that person would make? And what you're going to find is that it's very clear. It is very clear to you what that decision would be. And then it's really easy. Then you just number step number three, make that decision. You make that decision and then you do that thing that, well, I should say step number two is to make that decision. And then step number three is to do the thing. So actually do the thing that that best and highest self would have done or would do. And I also want to say, you know, I think a lot of self-help critics would, would, would say that you should picture yourself and you, would, you should visualize yourself in that, in that situation. And I think that sometimes we can do that and sometimes we can't. Uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not always easy to uh, just put yourself into that that situation and it's something that you should certainly strive for you should certainly try to do it um, but it's not something that we can always do quickly and in the moment so sometimes you do have to look at that look at that future version of yourself almost as another person and this is actually a way that you can begin to train yourself to feel more like that person feel more like that person who is already where you want to be and what, what what's amazing about this is that it, it, it's easy to understand why you would use a process like this to make large decisions in life. But I think where it's even more valuable is when you're making those tiny little decisions because it's all of those, there, there's big decisions in life and yes, they're important and yes, they'll have an impact on your future and what your life looks like. But those are also obvious. We're also very aware of the big decisions, right? Should I start this business or should I start this business? Should I stay in my job another year or should I quit now? Should I stay in this relationship or should I get out of it? Those are big life decisions and we recognize them as big life decisions. So we give them a lot of attention. We put a lot of effort into making them and making them, and I do it in air quotes, correctly. But 
what the real killer is, is all of those tiny, tiny little decisions. It's like that saying about death by a thousand paper cuts or something like that. Those little decisions are the ones that will get you. Now, one of the little, if you screw up one of the little decisions, no big deal. If you screw up 10 of them, probably still no big deal. If you screw up 30 of them, probably still no big deal. But over time, it's those little decisions that add up to big decisions. And the, a perfect example of that is, you know, you get home from work at the end of the day and you, you make some dinner and you uh, maybe feed the kids if you have kids and you take care of the house and do whatever you gotta do. And then you're all done with everything. And then you think, all right, well, what am I gonna do now before I go to bed? And uh, the, the decision that might be an easy default decision to make is, well, flop down on the couch and watch a couple hours of TV. But if you approach that from the standpoint of, well, what would my best and highest self do? What would this person who I want to be in the future actually do? Then you're gonna say, you know what? Maybe I ought to do some work. Maybe I ought to do some research on this business. Maybe I ought to send out some emails. Maybe I should make a few phone calls. Maybe I should uh, pursue this, this passion of mine that I've been, this saxophone that I've been wanting to play, or uh, I should read some books, or I should do something like that. So, and when you think about it, if you do that five nights a week, that's a little decision each time. Each night you make a little decision. But over the course of six months, all those little decisions have added up to a tremendous amount of time that you could have put towards building that life that you ultimately want. So I, th this is one of the things that's been really amazing in my personal journey of self-discovery and business and figuring out how to do life better. It, th this one has been particularly impactful for me because it's one of those things that uh, I, I started a couple of years ago trying to kind of make this work and I started kind of had this idea in my head and I used it with clients a little bit and I began to do it and what I have found in maybe the last six months or so is this way of thinking is becoming habit. Wow. I mean imagine when you think about every time you make a decision you think to yourself what would my best and highest self do? And you do the thing that that person would do. It's pretty amazing what happens. And yes, it absolutely gets results. There's no question that doing this sort of thing gets results. But I'll tell you what's even better about it. What's even better about this process and this way of thinking is that it allows you to live with integrity to who you are. Because when you come home from work and you do everything you gotta do and then you flop down on the, on the couch and watch Downtown Abbey or something like that, you're not living in integrity of who you are. You're not doing the thing that your best and highest self would do. And you go to bed and you might not consciously feel it but it's eating away at your soul. Because on some level, maybe you're thinking it consciously, it depends on where you're at on your journey, but you, maybe you're thinking it consciously, maybe you're saying, I just wasted another night. Or maybe you're not there yet, and maybe on a, if you're not, I can promise you, if you've watched this video so far, you've got some aspirations in life, you've got some things you wanna do. If you're not thinking it consciously, on some subconscious level, it's hitting you. On some subconscious level, there is something in the back of your head that is beating you up because you have wasted another night or you have made a, a, a decision, I don't wanna say a bad decision or a wrong decision, but you've made a decision that is not congruent with where you want to go in your life. And I'm telling you, when you start to use this process and it becomes habit, it's so wonderful, not so much because of the results it gets, and it does get phenomenal results. Ask me, I can tell you that for sure. And a lot of people can tell you that for sure. Um, but the best part of it is that it allows you to live in integrity and it allows you to lay your head on the pillow every night and say, you know what? I, I don't care so much what results I got today. What I care about is that I lived another day of my limited time on this earth in integrity and moving towards where I want to go. Nothing in the world will give you a better night's sleep than that. 
I hope you enjoy that. I hope it's helpful. If you want more like that and you want to work it together on a simple process that will help you to identify a business idea and uh, find the people who actually want to buy that business idea, that product, that service, that thing that you have uh, developed and take it to market, then go over to howtoquitworking.com slash kickstart. Check out the kickstart program and it is not expensive. I wanted to keep the price low so that cost is not a barrier to entry for anyone. So it is under $100. You can get more information and you can join over at howtoquitworking.com slash kickstart. I look forward to seeing you over in kickstart and I look forward to seeing you next time on the How to Quit Working Show. Thanks for joining us on the How to Quit Working Show. Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.